Peace, peace, family. Peace, love, out of healing. Peace, love, out of healing. Peace to the gods. Peace to the earth. Y'all climb on in. How y'all feeling? How y'all doing? Climb in the building. How y'all feeling out there? Y'all climb on in here. Hey, y'all is buying a mess out of these tickets, y'all. There's uh, only a few of them left for the seminar for the uh, Black Risen Messiah Alliance and Conference. So y'all better get them before they go. I'm pretty sure that it is going to be uh, completely sold out by tomorrow. So I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all for believing in me, for believing in the message and just really, you know, wanting to get this message out and unifying the African collective consciousness as a whole, y'all. So I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, all the rest of the dates that's going to be rolling out for the rest of the states and cities that we come into should be out by next Friday. And uh, I just wanted to jump on here to talk about something, man. I just got off the phone. I had a beautiful uh, consultation with a lady and, you know, she had a few things going on and we end up talking about sleeping and she had questions about fasting and things like that. So I wanted to bring awareness on how important fasting and how important sleep is to the body, especially when you healing from uh, any type of so-called diseases or sicknesses or imbalances uh, to the bio spiritual body. So if y'all ready to get this started, y'all type in some nines and we're going to talk about it. Uh, February the 26th, the Risen Black Messiah Alliance Conference will be held in Atlanta, Georgia uh, at the Epicenter v Village. Just click the, uh, click the link in the bio. And if you click the link in the bio, the tickets are there, the time, the date, the doors open up at 12. We kick it off at 1. The lecture is between 1 and 6. And then at 7.30, we kick it off for after social where you can do networking, talk to some important people. And we actually advise a plan on how to you know, gain our nationhood again and, and basically get out of this hijacked consciousness that we're in. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be full of information you never, ever, ever heard before. And we actually have plots, plans and strategies, y'all. And we already put forth our work and got a lot of things done to get ourselves out of the oppression, depression and suppression we in. Now it's just time to, you know, really share the information with y'all and see what y'all going to do with it. All right. So what we're talking about today is the importance of fasting and of sleeping, okay? And then if you put the word together, it is fast a sleep. What is so important about fasting? Fasting has been created since the beginning of time. Since we were able to eat and able to digest, we see if you look back in the ancient Sumerian tablets, if you look back in the ancient Kemetic culture, if you look back in ancient Nubia culture, if you look back in the Epic of Gil Gilgamesh, you can go back to, to ancient, ancient times and literatures and scrolls and prophecy. We see that fasting took place. Even when you study nature and you study archaeology, you start seeing animals was frozen during the Ice Age with nothing in their stomach showing how they were even fasting. So fasting must be very, very important because not only do human beings fast, mammals fast. So if every collective consciousness, no matter what species, whether you're homo sapien, sapien, neanderthal, prokaryotic cell, eukaryotic cell, bacteria, mammal, reptilian, if all these different species fast, that means there's something very, very important that we missing about fasting. Now, when you think about fasting and what it means, fasting means to abstain from eating, abstain from put, putting something in your mouth. Why is that so important? Because the more you put things in your mouth and the more you eat on things, your body like to localize the energy and take energy from every 150 trillion cells in your body and gear that towards digestion and breaking down your food. This is very bad when it comes to people that's trying to heal or people that is sick of diseases and viral loads and all this different illusions that the allopathic community don't put on us. But, you know, that's 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 hearsay. When you're suffering from improper balances and hormonal frequencies due to disruptions and acidosis in your body, when you're constantly eating food instead of the body's trying to heal itself and instead of the body trying to increase circulation to bring the goodies, whether it be bioflavonoids, whether it be cocuitins, whether it be any of these healing modalities that you need through circulation to heal these different areas that's that got energy blockages in it because that's all disease is is energy blockages inside the body the body have to use that energy to actually break down your food i don't think y'all 
understand how much electrical magnetic energy that the body uses to just break down food. And think about us, you know, especially on this sad diet or the, what they call this standard American diet in this Western hemisphere, where we just constantly feed ourselves and stuff food in our mouths all day, every day. Literally, all we do is eat. If we want to kick it, we go eat. If we want to celebrate, we go eat. If you want to have a romantic date, you go eat. If you want to talk business, you go eat. Everything inside of this culture that you do from a cultural European standpoint always involves food. Always. So you're constantly stuffing your bellies. You're constantly stuffing your stomach and you're constantly stuffing your digestional tract and your duodenum with food all day. So guess what your body is doing all day? Instead of your body, you know, breaking, instead of your body using its uh, uh, localized electrical magnetic resonance and frequencies to go heal the body, to go exchange amino acids, to build certain amino acid structures, to replace certain dying cells, to replace certain vital minerals, to uh, light code frequencies it's spending all of that energy and yielding that energy just to break down your food all day so what about your healing what about the rebuilding of the molecular structure what about the exchange of your mineral salts what about the exchange and the messages of your melanin neurotransmitters the body can't focus on too many different tasks at one time so the body forgets about healing and rehabilitating and regeneration and it only focus on digesting and breaking down the food to get the constituents. and if you really think about it half the time it ain't even getting constituents because you're eating dead food anyway that doesn't have any minerals or any amino acids or any yielding energy in it in the first place and the crazy thing about the biological clock of nature nature must knew that we was going to go off sometime on this journey that we call life it must knew that we was going to end up getting our consciousness hijacked and we was going to be hooked up into a falsification reality so guess what nature did nature said okay i know you negroes ain't gonna eat right i know you negroes gonna be addicted to this food so i'm gonna create something called sleep you see that? I'm going to create something called sleep based off of the astrological positioning of the sun and the moon. When the sun is up, you are up with the sun. You get all the melanin from the sun and this melanin that's produced by the pineal gland actually secretes in the morning time when the sun's up called serotonin. This serotonin, which is a conversion of melanin, makes you serious. That's why serotonin, serious, melatonin, mel uh, mellow. See that? So serotonin is actually created at night night but it's produced in the I mean it's produced at night but it's secreted during the morning and if you see what serotonin does to the body serotonin is a part of your awakening and sleep pattern it makes you focus it makes you hungry it, it, it literally gives you that different energy of ATP for you can walk around and do your everyday life things serotonin is what makes you serious inside the morning for you can get all your work and your tasks done right now melatonin is actually produced during the day but secreted at night and melatonin makes you mellow it makes you mellow and it makes you fall asleep now the reason why this is so important is because when you sleep guess what you're not eating and you're not drinking anything we call this a forced fast or we call this fast a sleep because when you're fast asleep you're not supposed to have anything inside of your stomach at least three hours prior before you going to sleep and you're not eating nothing and putting nothing in your digestive tract while you sleep so guess what the body is doing while you're asleep while you're fasting a sleep see that notice the word fasting a sleep the body is rehabilitating itself the body is regenerating and restoring energy and cellular tissues. The body is healing wounds that happen internally. The body is hydrating itself. The body is literally in a complex thinking chamber, whether we talk about astro traveling, whether we talk about REM sleeping, whether we talk about visiting multi, multi, uh, multi-dimensional density of senses, whatever it is, the body is going out of this body and bringing in all this etheric energy back into the body to heal the body mechanisms and to give the body all the energy yielding ATP or what we call adenosine triphosphate, right? That's what the body does when you're fast asleep. And it shows you the importance of fast. Fasting is for you to rehabilitate the body, rejuvenate the body, and regenerate the cellular tissues of the body. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this and why it's so important is because this, say you're not getting the proper amount of rest. That means you're not fasting. That means you're not force fasting. So that means all of that energy is going towards what? Digestion. Because usually if you're not sleeping, you're putting something in your mouth. Now, remember, the body rehabilitates itself when it's asleep. All right. Now, say you're not 
going to sleep or you're not resting. And you around artificial lights like this. I'm in a room full of artificial lights. Now I am tricking my pineal gland and my pineal gland is actually bouncing off of my octic lobe and my retina and it's taking in this artificial light and it's thinking it's sunlight. So I'm literally tricking my body to produce serotonin. See that? It's nighttime. The sun is down. I'm not supposed to be producing serotonin. I'm supposed to be releasing and secreting melatonin for I can go into my fasting sleep state. So now it's tricking my biological clock. So guess what this does? This throws off your whole entire homeostasis frequency. You see that? So now you're not producing melatonin at night. So you got sleep apnea. You can't go to sleep at night. Uh, uh, a lot of things bothering you. And now since you're not getting the proper amount of rest and the proper amount of healing, your whole day is going wrong. Then you sleeping throughout the day, meaning that you're not secreting serotonin. See that? And serotonin is very, very vitally important because that's how that's your sex hormone, serotonin. That's how you focus, serotonin. That's what gives you a hunger pain, serotonin. That's what gives you your memory, serotonin. Serotonin is literally the guide of what you would call the solar chemical, solar, because it's produced in the solar plexus, which is the gut. The gut is the first brain, and it's controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Or what we call the parasympathetic or the sympathetic nervous system. They call it the intrinsic nervous system. This is how you get gut feelings. You get gut instincts. This is truly the first localized brain where all the good bacteria, microbiotas, this is where everything springs from and is birthed from, from something called the primitive gut tube. Literally everything communicates with the gut inside of the body. I said see, sleep apnea. Forgive me, y'all. <laughs> y'all know what the hell I meant. You see that? So when so when the gut is off and you're not producing the right serotonin because you are being tricked by artificial lights and you're not going to sleep at the right time of the day and you're not actually waking up with the sun and eating with the sun and going down with the sun and sleeping with the moon. Now your whole entire rhythmic rhythmic frequency is off. So fasting means what? Fasting means healing and rehabilitating of the cells. Fasting is rejuvenation and, re, and, and, and rehabilitating of the cells. That's what fasting is for. So fasting asleep is when the body goes in through an incuba uh, incubator stage. And that's when the body literally re-resurrect itself. That's why when you wake up, it's feel like it's a new you because sleep is closest to death. So when you wake up and you resurrect out of that bed, it's like it's a, it's a rebirthing process. And you cannot have this rebirthing process if it wasn't for sleep. So sleep is very, very important because sleep is what makes you force fast. Y'all get that? So fasting and sleeping go hand in hand. Now, you do have priests or what they call Kohanim in Hebrew. And you got prophets, uh, prophets and prophets or what they call Nabim or Nabim in Hebrew that does this fast every winter solstice they does this fast every harvest feast and they do this do this fast every time that they burn the land and let the land rest see when you're into spirituality you you put your fasting on a biological clock and you do it towards nature that's what they do from an african mindset you see that you fast every day all day according to a bi-weekly uh solar or lunar schedule and the reason why they do this is because it enforces discipline ship inside of them and not only that it keeps them from getting any type of disease because they're always rehabilitate, rehabilitating their cells because they know how to refrain from food and they know how to afflict one soul. And that's what we need to start doing. We need to start afflicting one soul. We need, And this is how you break addictions. This is how you practice all types. This is how you save up semen. Do y'all realize how much of you, your sexual energy you use when you're eating and when you're breaking down food? Everybody want to talk about semen retention. The best semen retention is fasting and not eating and going on a solid food vacation. You see what I'm saying? That's that's the be that's the best semen retention that we that we can talk about here. You see what I'm saying? So it's so many different things that we can do and we can start implementing to break these addictions that's going amongst the, that's going on amongst the black community. It's so many things that we can implement. You can even do literally when you wake up, eat with the sun. That is not hard at all. When you wake up, eat with the sun. First thing you do when you wake up, you need to be drinking some coconut water or some cucumber juice, period. 
You see that? Then when 12 noon come and the sun is the highest in the sky, you sit outside and you eat with the sun. Then when the sun goes in, into three o'clock and it start going into this many different portals, this is your breaking down period. This is when all the energy that you need because you're in your fire sign starts breaking down and digesting your food. That way by the time six o'clock come, you don't got no, your stomach is completely empty. Now you ready to fast a sleep. Then while you're sleeping, you're fasting and your body is healing itself. Then you wake up and you can do these same things over and over and over again. Now, the benefits of fasting. The benefits of fasting is getting rid of parasites. The benefits of fasting is getting rid of brain fog. The benefits of fasting is healing the body, cleansing the digestive tract. The benefits of fasting is forcing the kidneys to actually filtrate. The benefits of fasting is opening up the lymphatic vessels. That way you can move interstitial fluid from up out of the body and get rid of all these local, localized diseases that's just setting up shop inside of your body. The benefits of fasting is semen retention. You actually get to enjoy all the phytonutrients and minerals and zinc and copper and gold that's actually in your testicles. The benefit of fasting is sharp focus. The benefit of fasting is retaining memory. The benefit of fasting is discipline ship. The benefit of fasting is learning patience. The benefit of fasting is building character, African character, African character, uh, characteristics and consciousness. There are so many different benefits than fasting that outweighs eating. It will blow your mind. It's like we're supposed to be spending our lives trying not to eat. Literally, you're supposed to spend your life trying not to eat, practicing breath breatharianism you know practicing a uh, liquid liquid dieting practicing anything but eating all these solid foods we eat way too damn much family we and that's why we're addicted to foods that's why we're getting so fat and that's why our colons is so packed with all of this food giving us colon cancer giving us stomach cancer giving us all the diseases that we're dealing with right now because we have lost discipline ship and we are scared to fast and then the allopathic community and the government got you thinking that if you fast more than nine days you die that's the biggest crock of shit i ever heard in my life they tell you three days without water and you would die of dehydration and nine days without food you would die of starvation that is the biggest lie i've ever that's the biggest crock of shit that you can teach anybody anybody i know brothers that haven't ate in years i know a brother right now in jamaica and a brother in africa that ever hate in years they literally only eat the breath they get all of their cosmetic energy or their cosmic energy i mean from the actual sun and from the moon by breathing in deeply and doing diaphragmatic breathing converting all of the nitrogen and the healing constituents in the air over to carbon then this carbon breaks down into glucose and fructose and their body get atp and they yield energy from that way and this is scientifically proven i know brothers that's been liquidarian in years ain't ate solids in years one of them bigger than me. It'll blow your mind. So we got to we got to we got to break the false narratives and break the hijacking of the African consciousness. They got us believing any damn thing. Y'all, they just put it out there. And if they put it out there in the mass media and they get enough people to say it a thousand times, you automatically think it's true when it's not, y'all. When it's not. You see that? And y'all focus. Y'all focus. I'm not here to, to have a, a nice vernacular. I, we are spiritual people. Long as you feel what I'm saying, that's all that matters. You ain't got to hear what I'm saying. And my word and my verbiage ain't got to be perfect. Long as you feel what I'm saying, because we are a feeling spiritual, rhythmatic, uh, 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 radi uh, radioactive people. That's all that matters. If you can feel what I'm saying, you feeling my melody and my tunes, you will learn more from that in my facial expressions than hearing these dumb ass witchcraft words anyway. You know what I'm saying? My vernacular, my vocabulary don't got to be good. I'm trying to unlearn this bullshit ass vocabulary because it keeps you in a state of imprisonment in your mentals. Just think of the words that we say. Hello. Yes, hell is low. What's good about that? He's a nice guy. Nice guy means to be ignorant. Good morning. What's good about morning? You mourn at awake. Oh, he's awake. Well, wakes is where they hold funerals from the dead. He earned a living. Earn is where you put the ashes of the dead. You start thinking, even the word fasting, y'all fast. How in the fuck is fast means to stop and abstain from food, but then you can say, damn, he runs fast. And that means he runs, he runs so fast that he can't stop. So we got the same word spelt the same exact way and, and even pronounced the same way. That means two totally different things. 
fast means to abstain from food, but I can say you're very fast and that means that you you have a high amount of fee, uh, speed and velocity. That shit don't even make no sense. So so that, let's not get caught in the word magic and in the word games, y'all. This is all a distraction and here to throw you off anyway. 9% of community, 99%, I mean 92% of communication is nonverbal anyway. I need you to feel me. We are spiritual African people of melanin. We feel, we feel what we saying. You know what I'm saying? Other people hear. Then you got people like, I feel that. I hear that. Dang, that sounds good. I can see that. You got you got Chinese people, they see things when they learn. They will say, I see that. I see that. See that? The Caucasians, they say, yeah, I heard you. I heard that. But when you start talking about African Hebraic people, we are such a spiritual people and our heart chakra is so big because we actually uh, 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 we actually permeate an uh, uh, electrical magnetic frequency from our heart and from our gut. We feel everything. And that's why we are feeling people. So long as you feel what I'm saying, that's all I'm worried about, y'all. But look, it's time to start fasting. It's time to start truly, truly learning discipline ship. It's time to start pushing them plates away. And it's time to start getting the right amount of rest, y'all. Because without rest, it's impossible to heal. Because when you're in your fasting state and when you're up and when you're asleep, that's when you when you asleep, that's when your body heals itself. And then notice when you wake up, when you wake up, what you say, you eat break fast. Breakfast, you're breaking the fast and you break the fast with liquids and then you eat your heavy, your heaviest meal at 12 with the sun. And then you, you don't eat nothing else after three o'clock. And then from three to six, your body is using all the energy to break down the food. You see that? And then once the food is breaking down around eight or nine o'clock, you go to sleep and then your body rehabilitates itself while you and other astro traveling bodies, you know, collecting cosmic consciousness and energy from other multi-dimensional realms or this open-ended universe you know what i'm saying and that's how the body works now for people that do have sleeping problems you have herbs that have a natural amount of melatonin in it like for instance valerian root valerian root yields so much melatonin and it will help you relax your nerves and it actually help you sleep so if you have sleeping problems and and, and you have a hard time going to sleep all you have to do is drink you some valerian root tea and that melatonin that's already inside of that root will help you calm your nerves and, and will help you get your biological clock back on the uh, rhythmatic frequency. You see what I'm saying? And there's, there's many other herbs that help you too, but that's the one when we chemically checked it in the laboratory that yield is most melatonin. You see what I'm saying? And then another one for serotonin, you use juniper berries or you use ashwagandha and that will help produce melatonin in your system and uh, get away from that brain fog. Uh, uh, reishi mushrooms is good. Chaga mushrooms is good as well. And uh, white lion uh, mushrooms is good too. And it'll bring up your cognitive mobilities. It'll have you focusing more. It'll get your memory together. It'll have serotonin, you know, being, being secreted properly in the gut and everything. Yes, valerian root, y'all. Valerian root. Oh, and look, so, and that's another one too. That blue lotus is very good with melatonin. I actually used to sell blue lotus. If y'all go down my IG page, probably like my first four pages, I had pounds of blue lotus. I used to sell a lot of that. We used to mix it with wine and let it sit for a few months and then drink it. I'm talking about, you're talking about having an outer body experience, a psychedelic experience. Mix some blue lotus with some organic, uh, with some organic fermented grapes with some wine. Boy, that'll blow your pineal gland wide open. We were sitting at the cosmic table, rapping with the council of nine every night, straight up <laughs> every night. I was blowing my third eye open, sitting with the cosmic, the cosmic ancestral beings talking about the evolution uh, of, of earth and the people of earth speaking with the milky zedics and all types of stuff you you want to blow your pineal gland open everybody want to talk about mushrooms and and acids get you some of that blue lotus and ferment it <laughs> that'll take you on a real good trip <laughs> straight up you want to go speak to mel kelzadek milky zedic drink you some blue lotus wine <laughs> straight up man but yeah family so that's all i had to say about that man make sure y'all book tickets uh it's only a few more tickets left. It will be sold out by tonight, I'm pretty sure. We're going to have a good time in Atlanta. Amazing time in Atlanta, February 26th. The Risen Black Messiah Alliance Conference. Because we all make up the body of Messiah. Messiah 
means to save. And we, we all have a spiritual and a physical mandate to save each other or save our people as a collective consciousness and a collective whole. We are or Christ consciousness that makes up the body of Christ, y'all. That is to call the Keter Chakra. When all the chakras are aligned, you become the avatar, you become the sacrifice, or you become the Christ. And that's all risen black Messiah mean. I'm not saying that I'm Jesus. I'm not saying that I'm Yahushua. I'm not saying I'm Yushua. I'm not saying none of that. I'm saying that we make up that entity. We make up that concept when we are together and we pull our consciousness together and we move in unity and we move as one. One mind, one spirit, one body, one sound, one consciousness. And that is the Christ conscious, y'all. And that is throughout every religion and every spiritual science system, y'all. So in order for us to achieve that goal and to get back our reality and to pull off the chains of this artificial reality, Due to the hijacking of our Hebraic African consciousness, the only solution is revolution. The only way up out of this is truly, truly unifying globally. And this is why I feel Pan-Africanism movement so much. This is why I feel African globalist movement so much. And this is why I feel the African nationalist movement so much. It only makes sense that we will have to collectively be in communication with all the brothers, sisters that spread it through the four corners of the earth to make this actual uh, a salvation thing work y'all salvation is in the people salvation is not in the land mass salvation is in you and i when we unify and we come together that's what makes culture and culture is nothing but a, a psychological web of thoughts and of traditions and of customs and these thoughts and these traditions and these customs are used for the advancement and the entrance of liberation of a certain people Everything we do is against our liberation. Everything we do is against our freedom. Everything we do is actually to another people liberation, to another people longevity, to another people wealth. We add into every other nation of people but ourselves, showing you that we have lost our culture. A culture also consists of an inheritance. An inheritance or heritage or identity consists of a personality. This personality has to be attached to a land. This personality have to be attached to a language. This personality have to be attached to a God and a, uh, and a custom. You don't have a land. See that? You are literally a African in America. Well, the whole earth is supposed to be our full store. The whole earth is ours. But notice, even though you had Africans that come over here thousands of years before so-called Christopher Columbus found the Americas, and you have the indigenous, real Native American Indians, which is our people. They look just like you and I. They, they voyaged over here thousands of years before the slavery happened. But notice, they came over here. They killed them off with smallpox. They, they had $2 killer Indian. Uh, they, 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 I mean, they murdered us, and they put a lot of us on boats and shipped us off to South America, Costa Rica, Puerto Rica, everywhere else. And then they brought a lot of us from Africa over here. So you lost your land. You speak English and you in America. English come from England. You lost your language. You serving all these different traditions and serving these all these different customs like Christmas and Valentine's Day, Feast of Saturn, Feast of Jupiter, hallowed evening or what you call Halloweening, all these satanic sacrifices to paganistic gods, meaning that you lost your God and you lost your culture. So you are a people without a land, a language, a God, a culture, meaning you are a people without an inheritance and without an identity. Identity. So we can get all that back if we collectively unify and break open this false artificial reality that we call the matrix. That's all this is. You have been hijacked and we can get up out of it once we have a plan and we stick together and actually enforce the plan. There is no solution without revolution. And these are just the facts of the matter, y'all. That's it. America is Northwest Africa. Uh, you can say that too, tomato, tomato. You got pyramids everywhere. You got pyramids here. You got pyramids in, 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 in Mexico. You got pyramids in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, you got the real Sphinx in Memphis, Tennessee. So we can go. I know that knowledge too. Regardless on what we all saying, the earth is our footstool. The earth is our entire home. But we are, we are conducive and we heal better. Where we heal better is in a tropical place. And America is not tropical at all. So stop the nonsense. America is not tropical at all. The closest you're going to get to the tropics in America will be Florida. And we can't say Hawaii and tech and all this other because because they stole this shit from other people land and then they counted it as America. So we ain't going to even play those games unless you go to Florida. 
That's the only thing that's going to simulate and imitate anything tropical. And you are a tropical island people. Your genetics show it. Your blood show it. Your genome pool show it. Your hair show it. The non-ether prokaryotic cells inside of your body show it. Your ass is from Africa. Whether you voyaged over here hundreds of thousands of years before the slavery, you want to claim to be an Indian and all of that. I'm down with all that. I agree with all of that. But let's just get the history right. Everything come from the mitochondrial Eve DNA. And the mitochondrial Eve DNA that all life come from, all life come from the Fertile Crescent of Africa. And you can't argue that facts. That is history. That is scientific database and all of that. So, you know what I'm saying? And that just is what it is. Everybody want to be everything but who they are. You are African. Even if you are Hebrew, you are Hebraic African. Even if you are Indian, you are indigenous Indian African. Even if you are Australian, you are Australian African. Everybody want to be everything but an African. Y'all don't see the division in the tools that they've been putting and implementing into our books, into everything to keep you from who you truly are? Let's stop the game. Everybody's Africans. Then you have different tribes that makes up Africa. So you can come by, you can go by a tribal name, Kikuyu, Yeberu. You can go by a tribe. You can even use the Hebraic name, Yahudim. Judah, you can, you can even use that name, but quit saying that you're not African. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Y'all be killing me with that, man. Y'all need to start doing like a lot of research, man. Everything come from the Fertile Crescent of the Nile Valley, whether it's going all the way up to Yisrael or whether it's going all the way back down to West Bank or West Africa. That's where we arrive from. That's where we come from. It is what it is. Yes, Pan-African representative, that's what it is. Garveyism movement, Pan-Africanism, African nationalists, African globalists, that's what it's about. It's time for us to get together collectively for we, for we can save, we can save, or savior, Messiah. We can save the African consciousness and the African mind to actually secure and ensure the future survival of our people, y'all. And we doing it, y'all. We doing it. We doing it on a massive level. So make sure y'all get them. Yeah, Drew Ali, Circle 7, I Self Law and Master. Peace to the gods. Peace to the earth. All of it. Look, five percenters, the Muslims, everybody got bits and pieces of the truth. You know, you just got to, I, I hate to say chew the meat and spit the bones because I ain't no damn meat eater. But I say, you know, uh, 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 chew, chew the kale and spit out the, the stock. Chew the kale, spit out the chop. Chew is good. Everything got truth in it. Make sure you, you dissect the truth. Resonate with the truth and get rid of anything that don't resonate with you. We're not here to force and pull your hand. If, if what I'm saying don't resonate with you, get off of my channel. Ain't no love lost. If I see you in the street, I still hug you and kiss on you. You know what I'm saying? You still my brother and my sister. We should be able to be able to talk about things and disagree on things without hating one another. These are tools that was created and that was implemented into the black community to keep us separated. Because when we're together, we collect and we make a, a Hebrew or her web. We really make a spider web. And a spider web is a mycelium network that can't nothing break through when we all collectively in tuned into it. That's the power that we hold. We like the damn Power Rangers. And when all of them come together, they make a big ass Power Ranger. That's how we is. We like a power. Once we all power up, go, go Power Ranger. We all power up at the same time. We create a big ass transformer and can't nothing fuck with it. So, so what they do is they cause separation and division and they do it through religion. They do it through gang banging. The CIA got, they do it through dropping crack off and guns off in your neighborhoods. They do it through clicks. They do it to, uh, uh, I mean, they do it to all their little black ops programs, anything to keep us from, from, from not, look, the whole thing is to distract you because the moment you weave through the distraction, you have to deal with self. When you deal with self, you're going to realize that you are not an individual, that you are part of a whole culture and a whole people. And you are part of a nation and a nation and a nationality. Now you're going to start wondering, you're going to start checking up on your brothers and sisters. Once you start checking up on your brothers and sisters, now you loving your brother as you love yourself. And that is where true power is at. True power is loving your brother and sister as you love yourself, y'all. And that's what they destroyed when they destroyed our homes, when they destroyed our culture, when they destroyed our identity and when they destroyed the just our, our, our power of self. And that's why you can look at another brother and not trust him. Look at another brother and look him up and down. Look at another brother and want to kill him and want to shoot him. Somebody look just like you that share the same ancestral genes and chromosomes as you. You see that? That is real anti-socialism. See, your, your whole sociological factor have been fucked up. You're, you're not socially privy, you know. They messed up your social skills. 
They really did. Then they got they, they have the nerve to put you in social studies. Put them in school and educate them for he can learn socialism. But you look at how we act to look at all the rap beef stuff's going on. Everybody beefing in the rap game, rap niggas killing rap niggas, all the gang bangers is gang banging and killing each other. Most of these gangs that were started by leaders have split up into splinter groups. Now they killing each other. Black on black crime. They dropping off AK-40, Russian AK-47s and in the neighborhoods and ain't none of us been to Russia. Bringing cocaine from Colombia. Half you niggas ain't been to Colombia. Showing you that they have made this construct system. They have made this reality for us. Then they put it in the hoods. They take the jobs. They take the industrial systems. They take the trades out of the schools. They take all of these things out of school. And they sit back and they watch us kill each other. They watch us rob each other. They watch us literally develop a self-hate for self. Because in order for me to hate you, I will have to hate me. Because me and you are the same exact consciousness. This is no mistake. This is not happenstance. This shit was created. It's called psychological warfare. Let me say it again. It's called psychological warfare. Black on black crime is nothing but a tool and utensil created by white supremacy. There is no such thing as black on black crime. We learn from the best. We learn from the best murderers on planet Earth. We learn from people who drop bombs on people. We learn on people who drop gases on people. We learn from people who make up viruses inside of laboratories and act like they're giving you vaccinations and inoculations and really they killing your ass. We learn violence from the people that took us by violence. So there's no such thing as black on. They be like, what about black on black crime? There's no such thing. Black on black crime is nothing but a tool and utensil that was created by white supremacy. If I'm lying, prove me wrong. If I'm lying, prove me wrong. If I'm lying, prove me wrong. A nigga wouldn't have to steal and rob an old lady for a purse if he had a good job. Oh, but he can't get no job because he got a felony. Dang, how did he get that felony? Because you didn't give him opportunities in his neighborhood to even get an education and do something with himself. And then if he do get an edu uh, education, you're only teaching him to go against his culture anymore because you will never, ever, ever, ever give the people that you benefit off the most their freedom and liberation because their freedom and liberation will crush your entire system because you live your whole life and you have gained all the resources and wealth of the world off the suppression, oppression, and depression of this people. So anything you give me, any benefit that you say you give me, it's nothing but a high wave hand in the front with a knife behind your back. You ready to stab me. You will never give me anything to liberate me because my oppression is what benefits you and your generation. Facts. I know it hurt, but these are the truths. And this is stuff that we have to talk about. These are things that we have to deal with. And you wonder why we have so many problems in our relationships. You wonder why we have so many daddy issues, problem raising our children. Because as a family structure, as a culture, we have been disintegrated. We, 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 we're not used to seeing that stuff anymore. We're not used to seeing it. That was going back a few generations. I mean, my great great grandma. I seen her stay with. I seen her stay with, with her husband, my grandpa, for many many a years. But he used to beat her like a dog. Beat her down. But then you go back and you go to two of his grandmas. His his mama's mama was in full blown slavery. So 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 who knows what they witnessed? And then these cellular memories travel down to him. And he used to seeing slave master beat the woman upside the head and beat the black man upside the head. Now he going upside my grandma head. That's what I'm saying. Now, am I saying don't take accountability as black man? I'm not saying that at all. We are supposed to be responsible. And if you look at the root word for responsible or responsibility, responsibility means to be able to respond to a situation to better the outcome of your people being ability means to be able so you supposed to be in a position and, and a cultural position to be able to respond or what you call be proactive to get the people out of the situation that they're in so responsibility is having the ability to respond to situations and issues that stopping you and your culture from growing and moving through evolution Y'all see how this thing go? We have to start listening to these words because these words have definitions. And that's why I don't give a damn about saying them, right? I say all the wrong words because they're curse words anyway. 
And they define who you are when you speak another people language and you speak another people definition. And that's the reason why we have to rewrite the narrative and start changing up these words and making up shit and putting our own definition to them. Because we are trapped inside of a system when we are depending on their literature, we're depending on their education, we're depending on their languages, we're depending on their God, we're depending on their clothes, their water, their food, their resources. Damn, we are totally dependent on another people and that's why we are not a people Ooh we now that the, the 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 that the cat is out of the hat now that the shit is out of the toilet and we see that this shit really stank and this fabricated you know universe or reality that they done hijacked our sensory senses and put us in we thought we was free now that we realize we are not free now the whole question is what are you gonna do about it black man what are you going to do about it, black woman? What plans do you have, black man? What plans do you have, black woman? Where are you spending your money at, black man? Is you spending your money with your people to ensure the future generations to come? Or is you spending your money with another people? How long before, when you get your check, how long do that money stay in your household? How long do it stay in the black community before you have to give it over to another people in another nation to, to send their children to school, to send their children to be doctors, to be lawyers, to lock your ass up, to be prosecuting attorneys, to lock you up, huh? to be judges, to give your black ass 100 years, to be cops, to shoot you down in the street. To be doctors, to kill you in the hospital, to be pharmaceutical tyrant, tyranny companies, to give you medicines that's going to give you side effects, that's going to have you dying before you even 40. You are giving your hard earned money to another people and sending their children to school to oppress you even more. Or you taking their education systems, but you can get a GED, a PhD, you can get a master's, a bachelor's. You know them ain't nothing but slave certificates, right? You went to school to learn how to be the humdinger of a slavery dude. You're the best slave ever. I got the paperwork to prove it. And then if you look at the GED or if you look at the PhD, notice it's a white man name on that motherfucker. They done signed off on your education. Huh? They done signed off. You done became a, the most intelligent, political, dumbest Negro ever. And you got the paperwork to prove it's all on your wall. You all happy for it. And then you have the nerve to say, well, Yaki, where is your credentials? What makes you a master herbalist? What university did you attend, Yaki? You, you want to you wanna see who's the best well-kept slave? <laughs> How long was you in slavery, Yaki? How did you how did you learn? What slave master taught you that? What you herbology? Naturopathy? Or do you have an MD in naturopathy, Yaki? No, the fuck I don't. <laughs> no. No, I don't. Yeah, I got a few certifications in master herbalist certifications. I'm not proud of that. I don't want to show y'all that. They got a white man named Rita. Y'all think I'm y'all think I'm gonna be proud to come to my people and say, hey folks, look what I got. I got a certificate from Master. I can go heal the world now, family. I got a certificate from Master, family. That shit whack. That shit whack. Get this get that shit up out of here. We don't move like that. We create our own trends. We the most influential people on planet Earth. We're the most influential people on planet Earth. We make shit pop. Tommy Hill figure pop because of us. Fendi pop because of us. Gucci pop because we spent our spending power with them. These people pop because of us. We got the spending power. You just don't have a culture and your consciousness have been hijacked. So you spend every dollar that you get to keep your black ass suppressed. Yeah, this is a truth moment right now, huh? I got to scratch my head. I ain't know I was going to go in like this. I'm supposed to say this for the seminar. <laughs> oh, man. We supposed to be talking about the importance of fasting. How we go to fasting and being asleep to this? <laughs> That's how you know freedom and liberation is seeping through my pores. Because no matter what, how, no matter what conversation I start, I end up talking about freeing my people. No matter what dialogue I'm in, it always end up about freeing my people. No matter if I try to talk about health, healing, wellness, meditation, spirituality, it always end up about freeing my people. This shit is seeping from my pores. I want freedom so bad for us, y'all. I don't know what else to even talk about anymore. I don't even know what else to even talk about anymore because it ain't nothing else to talk about.
because I realize that we are in a fucking construct simulation prison system. Everything that we think is real is not. Your food, you were addicted to your food because somebody told you to be addicted to that food. You like the cars, the clothes, and the hoes because somebody told you and taught you to like the cars, the clothes, and the hoes. You like that big old house and that American dream with that white picket fence because somebody told you that was cool. Do you realize people love lofts and being in cities where the sun is not sun is not out, only three to four trees out? You are nature people. These people done taught you to sleep and be like cavemen. You want to be high up in skyscrapers? You want to be around concrete structures that blocks the sun from even giving you cholesterol and, and, and vitamin D3 to convert over your melanin, your melanin to melatonin and serotonin by way of the ultraviolet rays, the radioactive waves that come from the sun. You literally are doing everything to destroy who you are and you're doing it unconsciously. And that's the fucked up part about it, because these things are unconsciously done. You see that? So I'm here to wake you up, to show you that this fake, false, fabricated world, this artificial world is fake as hell. I'm here to wake you up from that dream, to pull you back, to say, really, look, look at what's really going on here. These are fake. That food you're eating is fake. That air you're breathing is acidic. That water you breathe, drinking got all types of arsenic acid and, and, and mercury and shit in it. Them teeth that you got in your mouth got all types of metals that's leaking into your, your brain. That food you eat ain't even got seeds in it. They, they sprayed that shit with herbicides, pesticides, insecticides. Them clothes you got on is mixed fabric. These things hurt your blood and it weakens your, your electrical magnetic frequency that's being permeated through your body. Them shoes you got on. Oh, it's stopping you from grounding with the electrical magnetic grid of the earth. Them cubicles that you in all day on the phone with through nine to five, being away from the sun. Do you realize how much radiational frequency is going through your brain at the time? And you doing this from nine to five. That school that you sending your children to is training them to be slaves. It's called school to prison pipeline. Everything that you think that make your reality is fake. It's to keep you enslaved. Your ass is somewhere sleeping in a sensory deprivation tank. And you are being hooked up into a false reality thinking it's reality. Your ass is somewhere being, <laughs> being robbed, being spoiled of all your nervous system sensory senses, y'all. You, you are hijacked. You have been denaturalized. That's what happens. You are a processed Negro. And it's time for us to unprocess ourselves, reprogram ourselves, remember, relearn, and get our culture back. I mean, this is what it is. There's nothing else to talk about, y'all. And as y'all can see, every time I try to talk about something, it always end up being about this. The time is now. The ancestors, two weeks ago, I was in Atlanta. In Atlanta, as I was asleep, I had a mo the most vivid dream in my life. I had a fire in a pit of my stomach when I woke up, and it was shooting up to my heart. I felt the fire. I, I, I know for a fact it was the Kundalini energy from my root all the way to my sacral, all the way to my keter. And once it got to my Keter, the ancestor said, it's time. It's time to go. And it told me to go forth and move forward with no fear. So now I'm on it. The mission has begun. I've just been waiting on the go for the ancestors. And I got the, I got the go. I got the okay two weeks ago. Ain't no stopping me now. One, one, ain't no stopping me now. Ain't no stopping me. I got the go from the ancestors. They sent me the holy fire. I felt the fire being baptized in my gut, in my belly. I felt it being baptized in my heart chakra, my throat chakra. Every last one of my chakras was baptized in eternal fire. I got to go. So I don't know who I, whoever I used to be, that person is changing. I'm changing. Everything about me is changing. And it's changing so fast, I be scared my damn self sometimes. I'm like, God... Shit, who, who am I becoming? I don't know which ancestor living through me right now. But boy, I, I feel like sometimes I got the Shaka Zulu spirit. I feel like Malcolm X one day. I feel like Dr. Amos Wilson the other. I feel like <laughs> Dr. Yakanan Ben Yosef the other. I mean, I mean, I'm shifting. Ancestors is moving and speaking. It's time to get the work done, family. It's time to get the work done. It's time to gather and get the work done. Flat out. But, you know, <laughs> I'm in California, man. Uh, meeting up uh, meeting up with a beautiful, beautiful lady tomorrow. Beautiful black African goddess. She's an elder, too. Full of knowledge. Full of wisdom. And we finna get these seed programs, these heirloom seed programs uh, done. That way, by the time the seminar come, 
We have programs that you can enter into to get all the seeds, all the non-GMO, truly organic seeds that haven't been touched by this government. You can get them and you can plant these things and use these in your agricultural teachings and you can start growing your own fruits and your own vegetables and stuff like that. So I'm out here in uh, Cali, you know, doing the work for the people. There's nothing else to do. If it's not talking about freedom and liberation, then you ain't talking about nothing. And before I get off of here, I want to read something to y'all, family. I want to read something to y'all. You know, I was reading a book by John Henry Clark when I was on the plane today. And man, it, it stated something that just blew my top back. Check this out, y'all. This blew my top back, family. This blew my top back, right? And I see a lot of y'all saying that's P. We shouldn't be report. We shouldn't be. See, we got to We got to cut these people water off. If they if they are rapping about killing or degrading our women, we shouldn't be buying albums, downloads or repeating their sayings because we giving them power and we, we letting them know that it's OK for them to, you know, be at war against our, our daughters and be at war against our kings and our queens and to degrade our, our, our queens by calling them hoes and bitches. Talking about fucking on them and fucking them with their sisters or Killing our brothers, talking about doing cocaine, sipping syrup, and, you know, really fucking up our people, keeping us deculturalized. And then, you know, they, they do trans and we pick up on it and we start saying it. So subconsciously, they think that we are praising them and giving them power for killing our people and keeping them in their oppressed stage more. It's time to start cutting these rappers' waters off, y'all. We got to quit feeding them until they change the, the way they putting out these words because words are swords. It's time to start sitting down with these rappers, especially these influential rappers and telling them, look, until you choose to start talking about something positive, because my children like to listen to you. You are very influential. And say, until you until you change your music, we are no longer listening to you. We will no longer click on your YouTube page. We will no longer download you on Spotify. We will no longer download you on, on, on Apple. We will no longer download your music on YouTube. We will no longer buy your albums. We will no longer buy off your tickets to come to your concert until you start speaking things that's going to benefit our community as a collective African consciousness whole. It's time to really start doing that, family. So let's be real careful about repeating sayings and going along with, you know, things that have started because you know these are people that that are that are uh, or i wouldn't say against the community because it's another tool created by the jewels and white supremacy so they being used as puppets but you know once we have these conversations with these rappers and with these actors and these comedians and they still choose to do wrong then we got to cut their water off but right now we just we need to stop we need to stop you know feeding them until they start feeding the people and that takes a conversation it, t it just takes a conversation. So I'm not saying, you know, uh, Gunner is a bad person. I never met him. But I'm saying, you know, the things that he's saying in his music is having a bad effect on the African mind, on the African culture and on our children. And it, it'd be dope if we can have a sit down with him. You know, we can have a sit down with a few other of these these rappers and talk to them to see if they can change up their word and their dialogue for it can change and remold the, the consciousness of the African community. And once we tell these these rappers that these celebrities that if they don't change, then it's time to cut their water off and not feed and supply them no longer. You see what I'm saying? Like it's we're in like drastic times, y'all. It's no time to be playing games no more. You know what I'm saying? There's no time to be playing games no more. Now, check this out. I wanted to read this real quick, man. This is, uh, all right, now check this out, y'all. This is deep. This is by John Henry Clark. It says, if you start history at slavery, then everything else afterwards will look like progress. Let me say that again. If you start history at slavery, you started at slavery. All right, you start history as slavery. Everything else after that will look like progress. So us being able to be in hotels and ride in Lamborghinis and, you know, be able to make millions of dollars off, off of the health industry and stuff like that. People will look at my lifestyle and think that I have made progress. Because you only started the history at slavery. But if you go back before slavery, when we was gods and we was goddesses, when we was kings and we was queens and we ruled the world, we dominated the world. We had resources. We had oil. We had minerals. We had gold. We had cobalt. We had all these different hilly constituents. We owned the earth. And then you look at Yaki now. A million, million and two million dollars a year ain't shit compared to that. You see what I'm saying? 
Riding around in, in Bentleys, that ain't shit compared to what we was before slavery. Healing a few bodies, that ain't nothing compared to a nation that was healed and that didn't have no sickness and disease. So, so that's why it behooves us to go back before slavery. That way we have a measuring stick and we have an example and a blueprint to go off of. And then you will really realize, boy, we ain't been doing shit. We ain't been doing shit. We haven't been doing a damn thing because we was once gods and goddesses, kings and queens that had dominancy over the whole entire earth. I can't even go out of out of the country without a passport now. When the world is my fucking footstool, the world is your footstool. The earth was given to you, created for you and by you. And now you can't even leave. Without getting a permission slip from your, oppressor, uh, your oppressors. And, and, and you telling me that we done made progress? We ain't made nothing. We got a lot of work to do, family. A whole lot of work to do. And a whole, 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 whole lot of healing to do. Straight up. Straight up. Let me read this again and I'm going to get up out of here, y'all. This is deep. If you start history at slavery, then everything else afterwards will look like progress. <laughs> that hit like steel. Boy, that boy. I first read that. I was on an airplane, right? I'm next to my uh my brother, my media, my my media person. He created all of my media content. I tr he traveled everywhere with me. His name Jason. Jason God. And uh I looked at him and he just like, bro, you look like you seen a ghost. And I said, I did. I seen an ancestor looking at me, shaking his head, like, do better, do more, do more, do better. I read that and I seen I seen the ancestor, the face of the ancestor looked at me and said, do more, do better. Don't never get comfortable until your whole entire nation is free. Don't never get comfortable. Don't never let up until your whole entire nation is free. It ain't nothing else to talk about, family. And health and healing is wrapped all into this. And that's why it's right on my path. Whoever I'm becoming, this, this health and healing and healing, HIV, AIDS, sickle cell, all that stuff that I done did and accomplished. That this this that ain't that's that's minor things to what we gonna do when we collectively unify. That shit minor things. I can teach y'all all of that. That's minor to who we gonna become when we unify and move as one. Ooh we. That is a fucking force to be reckoned with. Do you feel what I'm saying? So who we are becoming? We can't even fathom. Who we are becoming. I, and I'm so excited. I Sometimes I just be yelling and shit. Just, I just. Ah! <laughs> I be, I'm, full of, I'm full of fire. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know what to, I don't know what to do with all the energy sometimes. I ain't gonna even, like, do, should I do some sit-ups or push-ups? You know what I'm saying? Like, let me go hug a brother. Let me go tell a sister she's beautiful. Yo, I don't even know what the fuck to do. <laughs> because I am transforming in, into something that I, I don't even know what it is. But it's, it feels so right. It feels so right, family. I don't know, man. Boy, <laughs> I'm ready to box this shit. <laughs> but, man, look, <laughs> I love y'all. I really do. You know what I'm saying? I love y'all from the bottom and the top of my heart. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people want to, I love you from the bottom of my heart. Damn, why you got to love me from the bottom? I'm falling in love. Damn, why you can't stand in love? You know what I'm saying? Peep the word sorcery. I'm falling. Damn, why I gotta why I gotta fall in love? I gotta trip and shit to be in love with you. I gotta love you from the bottom of my heart. I can't love you from the whole heart, from the top of my heart. I gotta fall to love you. So man, I love y'all with my whole heart, for real, for real. My entire being. You know, there is no you, there is no I, there is only us. You know, and as, as a great teacher of mine taught me, us stands for U.S. U.S. stands for united spiritually. That's what the us is. You know, so that's a beautiful thing. So, look, peace, love, light, and heal the family. Uh, I got to get back to what I was doing. I just wanted to rap with y'all about a few things. So, peace, love, light, and healing. Peace to the gods. Peace to the earth. Make sure that y'all book them tickets. Click the link in the bio if you need any healing herbs. Follow all my platforms in the, uh, in the bio as well. And click and get them tickets. We are going to have a magnificent time. I got special guests coming up in the building. And the presentation that I'm going to show y'all and the plans and strategies and the resources that I done pulled together, that we done pulled together. Let me quit saying I. That we done pulled together. Hey, when we united, there is nothing that we can't do, family. Facts. Facts. All right, peace, family. Peace.
I need to cut my nails. 